Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I was recently commissioned to build this four drawer jewelry chest, and so I thought it would be neat to bring you along so you can see my process of designing and building a piece. I love it when a client gives me free reign on a design, and that was very much the case here, as she only had a few stipulations for me to meet. First, she wanted it to be of my usual design style, which tends to be heavily Asian influenced. Here you can see the organic curves sort of growing up from the bottom, and the sweeping arches of the drawer pulls help to accentuate the flow. Second, the chest had to have three to four drawers with various divided compartments, so I elected to go with four drawers with one, two, four, and eight compartments respectively. I have been wanting to try out these diamond shaped drawer guides for a while, and this gave me the perfect opportunity to do so. I feel these tie the whole piece together nicely. I actually went through two variations of this design, so I'd like to show you my design process in the order it took place. The first variation was a shorter, blockier version. All four drawers were the same height, and the legs had less protrusion at the bottom. The bottom drawer has no divider. The second drawer is divided in half down the center. Drawer three is divided into quadrants and the top drawer has eight compartments. The original drawer pull design was simple with two posts holding a curved pull. I presented this version to the client and she was feeling excited. At this point we began to refine the design a bit. We decided that the bottom two drawers needed to be taller and that we would like to exaggerate the curvature a bit more. So I made some changes. Now the chest has two larger drawers at the bottom and the drawers at the top remain the same. The legs have been widened to allow for exaggerated curves and I felt this called for more leg protrusion at the bottom to balance the curve with the visual foundation. I also changed the bottom cross number to an arched profile which gives the chest a lighter, more elegant look. The change that made the biggest impact was the drawer pulls. This variation has opposing arches that flare out from each other and share two central posts. Once these revisions had been made, the client and I agreed that we had arrived at a completed design and it was time to get started. My first step is always to put together a cut list. This gives me all the parts and dimensions of the chest. I'm using walnut for this piece, but I'm going for contrast here so I will use sycamore for the drawers and a bit of ebony on the drawer poles. Cut list at hand, I begin laying out project parts. I was able to get most of my parts out of these two boards, even though I had to avoid a defect in the center of the sycamore. Now I can begin cross-cutting pieces to more manageable lengths. I was careful to lay out my parts a bit oversized. Because these parts have not been milled flat, the safest way to rip them is at the bandsaw. With the parts now cut to rough size, I will begin milling them flat and square. The jointer gives me two flat faces that are square to each other. And the planer flattens the top face parallel to the bottom one. I went ahead and planed all my parts down to final thickness. I now have all my stock milled on three sides. Next, I will use my table saw to rip all my pieces to final width. This gripper from Microjig makes ripping thin stock a safe operation. I use the crosscut sled to cut my pieces to length. A stop block ensures consistent cuts where multiple parts are needed. Here are all the parts dimensioned, labeled, and organized. Now I can begin shaping my parts and cutting joinery. 
I'll start by cutting all the curves, the legs, drawer poles, and bottom cross members all need to have curves cut into them. I like to use templates for layout as this ensures consistency. My scroll saw works well for the cuts and I have mine set up at a comfortable height. Because the pencil lines can be tough to see on a walnut, I added a task light. I use my 1 inch belt sander to fare the curves to the layout line. With the rough sanding done, I clamp the pieces together and sand them with a random orbit sander. Now it's time to start working on the case joinery. Each leg will receive four 45 degree notches for the diamond drawer guides to attach. I use my template once again to line up my cuts. Once I find the proper alignment, I add a stop block for repeatability. Once I have the first four cuts made, I flip everything around to cut the second half. Here I have the legs on the crosscut sled and I'm cutting each side of the dado at the bottom. This will receive the curved bottom cross members. With both sides cut, I remove the stop block and clean out the center. Finally, I use my miter gauge with my saw blade tipped to 25 degrees to cut the top angle. The top of the leg needs a notch bisecting the leg at a 45 degree angle to receive the top panel. So I outfitted my crosscut sled with a 45 degree V block. With the legs completed, I move on to the diamond drawer guides. These guides have a slight chamfer at the ends. I have my router table set up with a chamfer bit, and I'm using a backer piece to avoid any tear out. Now I can begin working on the back joinery. And I will start with the 45 degree notch in the diamond guide that holds the vertical support. So it's back to the V block to cut those out. Now I will cut the dados in the vertical supports. Back to the crosscut sled again. Finally, I use the belt sander again to round over the ends of the horizontal supports. Now all that's left of the case parts is the top of the chest. I went through my stock and found this beautiful piece of walnut. First, I plane it down to half inch thick. Then I use the jointer to get one straight edge. At the table saw, I rip the top to find a width. And I use my crosscut sled to cut it to final length. The top has to sit into the top notches in the legs, so some shaping will have to be done to the corners. I'll start by making a rabbit into the corners on the long grain. Then I'll rotate the top and make rabbits into the corners on the end grain. I use a ruler to mark the 45 degree cut to be made in each corner and cut along the line using the scroll saw. I set the router up with an 8 inch roundover bit to ease the sharp edges. With the case pieces done, I go ahead and give them all a fine sanding. It's much easier to do this now before the parts are assembled.
it's time to start assembling the case. I'll start by gluing in the diamond drawer guides into their corresponding notches in the legs. I am careful to line up the drawer guides so they are proud of the legs on both sides by 7 16 of an inch. Now I'll glue in the back vertical supports. And then it's on to the main case assembly. And lastly, I add the back horizontal supports. Yep, that's enough clamps. While the case is drying, I'll move on to the drawers. The drawer fronts are thicker than the backs and sides. So, the first step is to cut the fronts to final length. Then, I tip the blade to 45 degrees and use my miter sled with a stop block to cut the miters in each end. I have set this up so there is 1 8 inch of material left above the miters. This is where the drawer fronts will get a chamfer detail later. Next, I move on to the drawer back miters. First, I cut a miter on one end. Then, I set up a stop block and spin the pieces around to cut the other end. The drawer sides are done the same way. Now, I set up the saw to cut the dados that hold in the drawer bottom panels. I make an initial cut, then I move the fence over to widen the cut, and I sneak up on the perfect fit. Now I will go ahead and cut the drawer bottom panels. I'm using 3 16th inch plywood for this. Here is a dry assembly of all the drawers. I'll go ahead and paint the drawer bottoms black. Now, before gluing the drawer together, I still need to cut the dados in the drawer pieces that will receive the dividers later. This is simple enough. I just set up a crosscut sled with stop blocks and cut out the dados. Now it's time to glue up the drawers. Because this is end grain, I apply glue, wait a bit for the glue to soak in, and then apply glue again. Then I add the drawer bottom and close up the miters. Painter's tape is all the clamp I need here. I also added a clamp across the fronts to keep the joints flush where the chamfer will go. After an hour or so, it is safe to remove the tape. I use a sharp chisel to slice off any glue squeeze out. Now it's back to the router table to cut that chamfer around the drawer fronts. 
these chamfers really help to define the drawers. The drawer dividers go together with half laps. So I will use the drawers themselves to lay out the cuts. First I make a mark along the tops of the dividers using a ruler for alignment. Then I use a saddle square to transfer the lines to the face of the dividers. And with my saw depth set for halfway, I simply cut out the areas in between the pencil marks. I'll give the dividers the final sanding now. These dividers fit nicely. Now it's finally time to cut the 45 degree dados for the diamond drawer guides into the drawer sides. With the blade tipped to 45 degrees, I simply make a pass through the side of the drawer, spin it around, and cut the opposite side. I really took my time setting up those cuts to ensure a nice sliding action. The last thing to do for this build is to make the drawer poles. These will complete the look of the piece. I will start with the ebony posts. I've cut up some ebony pen blanks for this. Using the same router setup from before, I formed a small chamfer around the ends of the pen blanks. Then I head over to the crosscut sled to cut them to final length. Now I begin cutting the small tenons on the back end of the posts. The first pass establishes the shoulder, and the second pass removes the rest of the waist. Then I make the first of two passes to cut the dados that will receive the posts. And the second pass. Here are the posts all complete. They fit nicely with the pulls. Next I will cut the angles on each end of the walnut drawer pulls. I use my miter gauge with a stop block. The saw blade is tipped to 25 degrees, and then I cut the dados. I move the stop block over each time, and sneak up on a nice fit. It's time to glue the poles together. I begin laying out the mortise locations on the drawer fronts. With tape on the fronts, I lay out crosshairs along the center lines. Then I measure out from the center and use an awl to establish the locations to drill the holes for the mortises. I drill a 5 30 seconds of an inch hole in each mortise location. With the tape removed, I glue the poles into place. And the last step is always my favorite, branding my work. After a light sanding, this beauty is ready for finish. Because these woods are figured and have a lot of contrast, I'm just looking for clarity with my finish. I don't need to dye or tone anything, so I'm just going with a wipe on polyurethane. I use a brush to reach into the hard to reach areas and a bit of cotton cloth for everywhere else. This walnut really pops.
I give each coat 24 hours to dry and sand to 320 grit before applying the next coat. By the fourth coat, there is a nice sheen. I applied a total of six coats of polyurethane. Once the final coat of finish is dried, I apply paste wax to both the drawer sides and the diamond drawer guides. This ensures that the drawers slide smoothly. I'm really pleased with how this piece turned out, and my client is very happy as well. Thanks for coming along with me on this journey. I find seeing a piece through from design to finish to be extremely fulfilling, and it's just one of the many reasons I love what I do. Take care everybody, I'll see you next time.